Hey everyone, if you are wondering why was I gone for so long, well you see I decided to make a 3D game. So I was busy learning how to model stuff in 3D, how to animate it, how to make shaders, and how to use Unity for 3D games in general. Please, come in, I'll take you on a wonderful ride. First things first, because I am making a 3D game, I need to know how to actually model stuff. Since Blender is free, I don't have to steal it which is already a good starting point. Now there are a ton of tutorials on how to actually model, but you know what people say, read the book first and then watch a movie. Do you know what I say? Fuck that. After watching some tutorials I'm now basically a master at blend and modeling. Suck it readers. Using the knowledge I just acquired, I made a player model and the most beautiful eyes in the entire world. Put it inside of Unity and gave him some animations and a free look camera. Настало время нашему персонажу начать движение. So I open up Visual Studio, blah blah blah. I wrote uh, character controller dot move and our character moves. Voila! Then I wrote character controller dot turn and our character turns. But it's not very nice, so I went back and changed it to character controller dot turn nicely and now it works just fine. Since I'm not making a chess game, I replaced the chess board with a grass. I also added gravity, so we no longer float above the ground. Speaking about floating, I want some water in our world. So I guess I have to model and animate water, right? No! I'm going to use a shader. But Godzilla, what is a shader? Oh, <laughs> come here little boy. Come, don't be afraid, come on. Don't you ever ask a question like this in front of my friends. I don't know. What I do know is that I made one using Unity's shader graph. Made one, copied one, it's the same thing. And you probably won't believe it, but the moment I added water to my scene, trees started to grow around it. That's why global warming is a good thing. More water, more trees. More trees, less global warming. Now you look at these cool models and I know what you're thinking. I would like to do that. Don't worry, I've already made a tutorial for you. Welcome to my first tutorial where I'll teach you how to model a rock in 10 seconds. First add a sphere, then grab some vertices with proportional editing on and add decimate modifier. That's it, you rock. Sorry I have to speak quiet because my parents are sleeping. Subscribe. Now that is what I call a good tutorial. It was time to give an illusion that you are not alone in this world. So I made this house, then I made even more houses. So now I have rocks, water, trees, houses and grass all ready. All I need is that more of you guys would actually subscribe because currently only 10% are subscribed. What is going on? And a better terrain to put all that magic onto. I think I made it too big, but we can fix it later. I started planting trees, throwing rocks around the area, painting roads for the main town. I also added this cave to lead you to another zone later on in the game and started working on the houses. A quick tip, if you have a simple house, it doesn't look interesting. But if you make its windows glow, it feels like someone is living inside. Alright, we got some information that someone in town is selling uranium to the terrorist organizations. Who could it be? Hmm. No suspects. Yet. With houses in the right places, it already starts to look like a small village. Here's a weapon shop, here's Mr. Johnson's house, here you can buy armor from Frederick, and here's someone's summer cottage. I spent some more time adding trees, rocks and grass around the map. I used to think you need a lot of assets to make a scene feel not repetitive, but I'm using just 5 different trees and 7 different rocks with different rotations and sizes, and it looks okay. I also made box and barrel models, because for some reason all games need boxes and barrels. As you can see I was having great time, but then it happened. Oh no, lag spikes. After some time of playing, I started having huge lag spikes that would go away in about a minute and then repeat themselves again. So I used a profiler to see who's bottlenecking my CPU. Unity said it's Unity's editor, so I tried building the game and it seems okay. But I still decided to optimize the game just a little little bit and made an occlusion cooling map. Sir? Yes? Never mind. Oh, come on, just ask the question. What is an occlusion map? Well, you see, what an occlusion cooling map does, it makes sure that objects we cannot see won't be rendered. Oh, I see. But don't you ever dare to ask a question like this, because everybody knows the answer. I added a huge rock in the cave to block a passage, because you know what? You guys deserve an epic boss battle. 
So once you've defeated every enemy in the game, a miner will remove a rock and you will be able to reach a final boss zone. Talking about enemies, what the hell is going on here? So about the enemies, I decided to make a coliseum somewhere around here, where you will face gladiators, and each win will give you some gold and maybe experience if I decide to make a level system, but if you die, it's game over, so it's basically a swords and sandals in 3D. Do you know what swords and sandals had that my game doesn't? Swords and sandals! To test how it would work with animations, I added some cubes on top of player's head, feet, body and sticked one into the player's arm. And I can already see that armor won't look good, so I'll have to model a character wearing it. But other things look alright. Do you know what doesn't? A bonfire without a fire. Currently it's just a bond. So I opened up the VFX graph and made some fire effect. I think it turned out to look really good. Or maybe it's just my love of fire. I can't help it, I love fire! Now listen to me, firefighters. If that is even your real name. If my house is ever on fire this beautiful, don't you dare to put it out. Let me die. I was getting lonely running around and looking at fire, so I made Frederick, the armor seller. Now he sits on his anvil and looks at you if you enter his shop. And you may not believe it, but the moment Frederick opened up his shop, people started appearing in the town. Alright, let's go make a weapon seller now. A weapon seller is a bit more badass, sorry Frederick, but he's also really interested in you walking around him. But who could blame him? Look at those eyes. You got perfect eyes. You got perfect body. You could really make some money with that. But you know what? I think some people can get way to touch you when you are this handsome. So I think we need some weapons to defend ourselves. Ah, I feel so much safer already. After testing every sword in your hand, I made shop UI so you can swap your swords or buy new ones for the hard earned gold in the arena. I'll make a nicer UI later, but for now remember that this shape means buy, this shape equip and this one is unequip. Easy right? Now that we are armed, I added combat animations to punish those who make fun of our god. To make combat a bit better, I made a combat state you can enter, in which you can strafe instead of run, and always rotate to the point you look at, so it's easier to aim your attacks. Even though a character can walk and swing his sword around, it feels like he's not very interested in the world around him. That's why I decided to implement feet in verse kinematics, which basically means a character places his feet on the ground first, and then the rest of the body adjusts. After some time I got it working. Or at least I thought so. And no matter how much I tried, I couldn't fix it. So I made a new, more complex system, with way more parameters, and it worked way better. And I was ready for my photo shoot. Oh my god, he looks so good in that photo. Oh my god, what a bitch. But it had its own problems too. The final solution was for it to behave differently when running and when standing on the ground. I think a lot of games use this approach. Sometimes it's still a bit buggy, but I feel like it's a good trade-off. By the way, I feel like this video is getting quite long and there's still a lot of things to add, so I will make it all in part 2, which I promise will come out way faster than this one. Before you go, make sure to leave a comment so I can make some enemy gladiators from you or whatever. And do you remember the subscribe thing? It's still 10%. Why? Why are you doing this to me? Also, you didn't like the video yet, did you? Do it. Now, and thank you all so much for watching, and good night.